Hi guys, it's Michelle from Little Mama's House and I'm finally back today with another tutorial. What I'd like to show you today is how to use this product right here called URAD to restore the leather on a vintage piece. Now this product is a all-in-one product. It, it cleans, it conditions, it shines, and it protects. So it is a waxed based product but it is biodegradable, all natural, um, and it doesn't have a bad odor but it is a wax so it will discolor your vachetta. Now, I don't recommend you use this on a new purse. I don't recommend you use it even on a purse that has a light patina. What I suggest is that this be used in a case where the bag is in vintage condition, the leather is very dried out, it's worn, it's watermarked and faded, and you just sort of want to give it new life, shine it back up, even out the patina as much you can, and then be able to use it as you were. So what it will do is it will, I don't want to say fix, but it will hide, cover, even out, smooth out some minor scuffing. It will even out some watermarks and it gives your bag a nice sheen and restores some of the suppleness, especially on very dried out leather. I will ask one of the ladies in my group posted a before and after. She had a bag where somebody actually took sandpaper, I kid you not, to the bag to try to lighten the patina bad idea, should go without saying that you should never, ever, ever do that, but some person decided that that would be a good way to try to lighten their patina, and the bag was almost destroyed. Well, she applied this URAD cream to the bag, and yes, the patina did darken, but it looked fantastic. She basically saved the bag from the junk pile. So this is another option in a restoration arsenal. Um, if you don't want to dye your bag, if you'd like that natural sort of look, even if it's dark patina, it just keeps that natural look. So I'm going to show you guys today how I do that. Now before I do, this product, again, this is URAD. It is an Italian-based company, um, or it was created in Italy, and it comes in a variety of colors. What I have here today is light brown, but it comes in, I believe, um, neutral, dark brown, light brown, red, black, cordovan, um, a couple of, I think a couple other colors, but it comes in a variety of colors. And what you want to do is pick the color that's sort of closer to your patina. So if you have a newer looking or very, very light patinaed bag, you don't want to apply this brown because it's going to really darken compared to what you had had. But this, our victim here, is already pretty dark as you can see. Um, now this has already been cleaned and conditioned, um, but you can see it's it's not the lightest patina and it has some cracking um, on the handles right there. Let's see if you can see that in the pictures. Um, right there, see that? So it has some significant cracking there and it also on the chats has some watermarks as you can see and some significant obviously watermark on the bottom and um, a little bit on the two ends, if you can see that. The corners are a little bit dried out. Now again, like I said, I've already cleaned and conditioned this. This is that's always the first step you wanna do. But now I'm gonna go ahead and apply the URAD treatment to sort of bring back as much evenness and shine to this patina as I can. So what I like to use now, URAD comes with this, which is great for big areas like the bottom of the bag. But when it comes to the chats and handles, this thing is just cumber cumbersome. It's too big and it makes a mess. The stuff is super duper sticky. So you want to try to avoid getting it on anything other than the leather. So what I like to use for the smaller, more detailed areas of the bag are little makeup sponges. I just buy a big pack of them at the dollar store and they're perfect for applying the URAD. Now, the bag itself, as you can see, I have it propped up on this vase. It's just a cheap vase we have around the house. So I have it propped up so that the handles hang and don't touch the ground and they don't touch each other. Again, that's because this stuff is super duper sticky and tacky once it starts to set up. So if you brush against it, if you rub against it while it's still setting, it's going to stick, it's going to ruin your finish, and it's going to look terrible. So you want to sort of set yourself up in a way that your bag is going to be draped so that you can work without it touching anything if you can avoid that and then I when I work on the handles I like to hold it by this little rim if I have to hold it with two fingers I just sort of whoop, whoop, see I just use two fingers to hold that and try to avoid handling it as much as possible and again it's not that big a deal if you get a mark in it you can just use a little bit of um, rubbing alcohol take off 
the URAD and start again. It's not fatal, but the more smooth you can apply it, the better. So um, there is a really great tutorial if you go on um, their website, which is, I believe, URAD.com, but I will link it below. And they have a video tutorial which sort of shows you how to apply it to a pair of shoes. So we're using the same principles. It's not rocket science here. You want to follow the instructions that they give you. So first off, you want to shake it up because it does tend to clump a little bit once it's been setting for sitting for a while. So I always give it a good shake to make sure it's as liquidy as I can get it. And again, this jar is pretty full, so I'm not going to tilt it over to its side that much. But if you look there, see, it's right now it's liquid. And I will show you again once I'm like done what it looks like that it's been out and setting for a few minutes. So what the instructions on the website to say to do and what I do is I dip the sponge and I just start with what's on the cap because I don't like to waste it. So I dip the sponge and then you want to remove anything that's excess off of the sponge. You don't want it glopping on there because it starts to set up fast. And if you apply too much, you're going to get a streaky mess. So really a very little bit goes a long way. And you know, you're not going to be able to really see me doing this on the bottom. Um, but what you want to do is you want to rub it on quickly. You're going to work pretty fast here with this. Um, try not to make streaks and you want to rub it in so that it's not overly wet looking. So what I do is I get it on the entire bottom of the bag because that's what I'm doing right now. And then I start to buff it in and I just work in small circles. I go back over it so that I'm not leaving streaks until it doesn't look like it's wet. It's still wet, so don't touch it. But you don't want it to have that super shiny, glossy, watery look to it. That's how you know that you have it worked into the leather. Okay, and you're not gonna apply any more. Do not be tempted to load more onto that sponge because you don't wanna build this up in thick layers because it won't dry and you will be left with a tacky feeling mess of a bag. So again, you know, I say this in a lot of my videos, a lot of these products, yes, I'm showing it to you and I'm either showing it to you sped up or I film it in parts and I come back the next day and I'm doing the second half the next day. So guys, you know, I know I'm showing that this is going to be done in like a sitting. It's not going to be done in a sitting. Um, it takes time to do it right. If you're not going to do it right, don't bother to do it send it in. There's plenty of people offering the service, myself included. But if you're going to tackle it yourself, take the time, do it slow, do it properly, don't rush it, and you'll be satisfied with the outcome. Okay, so I've applied it all over the bottom, and now I'm going to literally not touch that um, for at least a good hour or two until it is completely dry because otherwise, like I said, it's going to make a mess. So now moving on to the sides of the bag and this, I think I'll be able to show you a little bit better how, how I apply this. So I'm just going to tilt, tilt this like this. And again, I'm trying not to touch as much as I can. You definitely want gloves with this. It is really sticky. It's really messy. So what I'm going to do now is come with my little makeup sponge and just apply the same way. I'm going to load it on and then wipe it off. There we go. And then I'm going to come in and I'm going to do the sides. And literally, I am just wiping it on. I'm not worried about right now um, if it's looking any more even. This is the first coat. This, this stuff takes a couple of coats to really, on a bag that has as much water damage as this one does, it's going to take probably four or five coats, I'm guessing, to really get it to look super duper smooth and even. So I'm not worried about that. What I am making sure that I don't do though is I'm making sure that I don't leave any globs because if I go, let me get on an area that you can see. If I come to this corner, right, and I take my stuff and I, you know, take it off and I just go like this or like that. Okay, can you see that? That's going to leave a big streaky messy mark once it dries. It's going to dry exactly how I leave it on there. Okay, so if I leave it on in a clump, it's going to have a clump. Let's see, my top is already starting to get very um, tacky. So try not to go up and down over it. Try to stick to the part you're working on. If one part doesn't look as good on the top, you know what? You're going to go back, you're going to buff it, and you're going to do another coat. So it's not a big deal. Once it starts to set, you can set it and forget it, as Ron Popeil would say. So you don't want to go back over 
that because then then there's gonna be trouble so I'm just working it in smoothly almost like if you were applying makeup to your own face and you're using a makeup sponge so that sort of hopefully makes sense and um, you're just gonna work that in so I'm gonna work my way around the bag um, and just rotate it carefully trying not to touch it <laughs> again this is actually the hardest part of doing one of these treatment treatments is not touching the finish really there's not much to it it's not rocket science like I said before it's really not a difficult thing to do it's actually harder to um, not touch the bag once you start working on it and again as with anything it's one of those things that once you've done it a couple of times you get better with practice and you know it goes on smoother the second time you obviously you know if you never worked with it you're not really quite grasping the texture of this lovely stuff which is sort of gross if there was one thing I can change about this it would be the texture because it has no odor at all which is really nice because you can get down right right up in its face to work but it's literally sticks to everything if you get a hair in it the hair is sticking there if you use a cloth that's not a lint-free cloth you're out of luck because that's not coming off you're gonna have to take off your coat and you're gonna have to start again so I'm again just working my way in and so I've worked all the way around and as you can I hope you can sort of tell that it's starting to pick up um, a little bit of a nice sheen from the urad and starting to even out a little bit okay so and don't worry too too much like I said if you make a little error you're gonna buff this out once it's dried the instructions of your ad actually I find that a little bit funny because the instructions on the website say oh there's no need to buff but I always find it looks better if you've buffed it out Let's sit down so you can actually see me I always find that the finish ends up just looking a little bit better if you've buffed it out once it's completed because you're sort of getting rid of that I don't want to say weird excess shine because we all know that yes while a Louis Vuitton bag can have sort of a sheen to the leather once it's well patinaed and well moisturized. It can have that nice sheen, that like protected gloss, but it's not like a patent leathery gloss. And as this stuff starts to dry, like you can see I'm catching it right there. It does pick up a really high gloss while it's still drying. So I find that if you buff it, which is great, I mean, it's great. It's what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to shine it and on shoes, that would be wonderful but on our bag we don't necessarily some of you might but in general we don't necessarily want it to look fake we don't want it to look like it's not supposed to so I find that buffing it after reduces the shine just a fraction so that it doesn't look odd so what I'm gonna do here for these chats is I'm gonna move myself sort of out of the way over here so that you can maybe see a little bit better how I do this part and again be careful because this stuff is so sticky and gross um, just be careful. So I apply it with my makeup sponge. Okay, I have still a little too much on there. So I'm gonna take it off. A little does go a long way with this. And again, the more you apply on at a time, the harder it is to get that smooth. So I'm going to just come back in. Go on my chat. A little bit on the canvas there it just wipes right off and if it dries you can clean that off with just a little bit of um, water or a baby wipe after it's not fatal to the canvas it doesn't really hurt it. I mean it makes it temporarily look like it has a brown spot but it will come off now um, again this is not unlike a dye so if I was I could dye this take this bag and dye it and it would be whatever color I chose to dye it this bag would be forever this is not a dye product, so it's not going to last forever. Over time, it fades. It's like a, it's like a, well, it is literally a wax. So it's a protective coating on the bag, but it is just that. It's a coating. So over time, it will start to wear off. It'll lose its luster. It'll lose its shine. Um, and it'll just start, you know, showing a little bit more maybe dryness. It's just going to it'll last you a while and it'll keep the bag looking good but it's not permanent so the good thing about you red is that you can come back in and do another coat 
it's not a big deal. Once it's dry, you can put more coats on. So I'm just carefully coming in and doing um, the chats. Now for the handles, like I said, is this is a little part is a little bit tricky. You want to try to get it on there. And again, same deal with the brass. Don't worry too much if you get it on there. If you get a big glob on there, you want to wipe that off. But if it gets on there, you can. I clean my brass at the end always, no matter what I'm doing to a bag. Brass is the last step, so it's not too big of a deal. I just have like a dirty sock right here, and I just come in and I give the brass a little bit of wipe if it gets on there. And then I come in and I do the handles. Now again, this is the side, and I hope you can see there's a little bit of shine here. That there's some really sort of big cracks. They're not super deep or super duper bad, but they're there and they're visible. So um, hopefully that this treatment will sort of, again, you know, you know, if you've been watching my channel, I hope you know that there is no way to repair those um, other than taking your bag to Louis Vuitton and having them replace your leather. I can't make them go away. I wish I could, but I can't. Um, and so until there is a way, this is actually, this product, this you read, really, really truthfully minimizes the look of them. It really does a good job of sort of disguising those little hairline cracks that we all get and, and love on our bags. They're inevitable, um, but that doesn't mean we have to just live with them. This product really does a fantastic job of making them look, you know, not so bad. Okay, this is the part now I'm gonna sweep over that because I touched it. I'm going to hold my handle by the very tip. Okay, and just come in, make sure that I didn't leave any big globs of product anywhere. And I think we're good. So now I hope you can see. So I'm just trying to block, block this light a little bit from glaring off of it. But I hope you can see, see the um, crack is starting to look a little bit more moisturized. It's starting to look a little bit, lay a little bit flatter against the bag as opposed to looking like a um, deep gouge. It's really not a deep gouge, but we, we all know that when your leather gets really dry, some of those little cracks can end up looking like they're major. So that's dried out. That's, I'm sorry, um, nice and moisturized now. So what I'm gonna do is carefully, and, that, and this is always the part that's dicey because now I have a, a tacky handle. And I'm going to rotate the bag, put it back on its temporary shelf. That was successful. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. And then once this is done, what I'm just going to do is leave it. I'm going to walk away from the bag. Repeat after me, walk away from the bag. Because if you touch it now, you are going to screw it up. It shouldn't be touched until it is dry. And by dry, I mean all the way dry. Don't risk it, don't rush it. It's not worth redoing the whole thing from the beginning. Wait. So I'm going to walk away from it. I'm going to wait. And then when it is completely dry, probably in um, a couple of hours or preferably overnight. Again, I know I'm filming a video here, so Use your best judgment if it's humid out, if it's raining, if it's, I don't know, wet in your house, if you're working in a basement where there's not good air circulation, just wait. It's not that big of a deal. It's not a rush. So, um, yeah, I, I can't stress that enough is that with this stuff, don't touch it because it's sticky. And, I mean, it's sticky. This is not even all the way dry. It's sticky. Okay and you, you don't want it all over your hands. You really don't, it's not toxic, like it says on the thing, but it's a chore to wash off. So all, you know, wear junky clothes. You know, I know uh, I have uh, some fans of my channel who like to make fun of the clothes that I wear while I'm showing you guys how to restore bags. Well, you know, I'm not putting on my expensive clothing to come sit here using, you know, leather dye and urad and all of these things that will destroy your clothing. So don't wear something nice while you're doing it. Wear your gloves. Um, put down something to protect your table, whatever. But don't touch the bag is what I'm really trying to tell you. Don't touch the bag. Okay? So that's it for this side. That's all nice and even. The 
handles are looking already looking great and this is only after a coat and again also when you first apply it because I'm using the light brown it's gonna look a little bit darker than it will once it's completely absorbed and dried so don't worry I mean, it is like I said it is a wax it is going to darken your um, vachetta especially if you're using anything other than the neutral but don't panic it's not going to darken it it's not going to darken it in a way that it looks like dirt it is going to enhance the honey golden you know typical beautiful patina that we all want so again this is not going to lighten your bag it's just not if that is your goal turn the video off don't try it don't use it it's not going to lighten your bag it will even out your bag and it'll make it look nice and shiny and um moisturized so i told you i'd show you see now that this is been sitting here and I've been working with it for a good few minutes it's now almost solid so you you don't want that when you're working with it you want it to flow so it doesn't clump on the bag okay so I'm just going to seal this up I'm going to clean up my workspace and I will be back to show you after this is completely dried out for a good couple hours and I'll apply a second coat okay hi guys I'm back and it has been a few hours and the purse is still a little bit tacky but mostly dry to the touch so i wanted to take it down quickly and just show you where it stands now so as you see i've done a coat on the bottom and it's evened it out uh, quite a bit so as you can see it's not perfect yet but it is a little bit improved of where it was um, this big water stain is still quite visible and um some of the darker areas are still visible but it's dry to the touch, which means I can go ahead and apply a second coat. So the handles are not perfect, uh, but they do look a lot better than they were. And they're nice and uh, shiny, and you can tell they don't look dried out anymore. And there's the chats. Again, these two sides still have that dark water spot, so I'm still going to put another coat or two on there. But these are looking good here, nice and even. So I just wanted to, you know, do a quick update so you can see how it looks after you know, a couple of um, applications. And then I'm going to finish this up today and I'll show you probably tomorrow the final result. So stay tuned and then um, I'll be back tomorrow with the end result. Hi guys, I'm back. I apologize, I'm filming from upstairs in our office because it's the two days before Thanksgiving while I'm filming this and I host the Thanksgiving, so I do all of the cooking, all of the cleaning. I'm even more of a mess than I usually am because I've been cooking all day today. But um, I did want to show you the results of the URAD bag because it came out very nice um, and it did a really good job at restoring some of the sheen and luster and um, moisture to this bag. So I wanted to quickly, from my office, give you guys a quick overview of how it came out. So here it is, and it is completely dry, and I've buffed it. Um, it still has a little bit of that like high sheen to it and that will start to diminish as I use the bag or whoever ultimately buys the bag because I'm not going to keep it, I'll be selling it. But um, as it begins to be used, it that will start to diminish a little bit and it won't look so overly shiny. But, um, you know, the more you spend time buffing it out, the less shiny it looks. So I just wanted to show you. Here it is. Here's the bottom. And again, I'm going to put the pictures of what it looked like before um, right here so that you can see. Now the patina was lighter looking before. Um, now this is not, this URAD is not permanent. So if I wanted to, what I could do is I could take either baby wipe or wet cloth and just wipe it off. And the patina will go back to looking like what it looked like before. Um, but I feel like with this darker sort of aged patina that the URAD, um, and again I used the light brown URAD, um, trying to look, yeah. I used the light brown URAD, um, so it did have a darker sheen to it, but, um, and then if I had used the neutral, so I feel like this did even out some of the really severe water staining, and as you can see, like I said, it still has that high sheen to it, but look how much more moisturized the leather is than when I started and I'm going to show you because you can especially notice it on the corners so I'm going to put the there's the corner and the corner still looks a little bit dirty I mean this isn't going to completely get rid of those really dark black marks and again this is not a substitute for cleaning your bag it's not a substitute um 
you know, making sure that your bag gets no water stains is literally just an other, another option to restore your bag other than dyeing it. So there's the corners. And as you can see from the pictures that I'm inserting here along with these, the corners were in rough shape before. They were really, really dried out. And this, again, didn't, didn't remove those scuffs. The scuffs are, I mean, the leather is scuffed, but this really... It's hard to see because of the glare, but it really, really shined them over, protected them from getting further damage, and did a really good job at sort of sealing those up. So you can see there. And then there's the, um, the sides. So it looks, I mean, it's so shiny that it's really actually even hard to, to get a good look at it because the, the light just shines off of it and those are not scuffs that is just the light shining off of it and then um it did an also a great job on the handles and chat so there's sorry again with this lighting here's the first side And then this was the side that had some of those big cracks and those really dark water stains. Now the water stains are still there. They're still visible, but I do feel like they're less noticeable than they were before. Now, if I had gone to town cleaning this, and I did, um, before I applied the urine to this, I did do a brief, really fast cleaning of the bag. I didn't scrub out the marks. I didn't try to really even out the um, vachetta too much as I could have because I wanted to show you just what the urine does so that if you don't really, you're not comfortable cleaning the bag, you don't know how to clean the bag, you could still use the Urad and get a nice result. So I didn't want to um, over clean the bag because that sort of takes away from what the point of the Urad is. Anyway, so um, you can still see those marks. They're not as bad as they were. And in fact, um, at certain angles, you barely even notice it at all. But what it really did a nice job on was the cracking that was on the handle. And as you can see, and as I did mention before, the cracking isn't going to go away. This won't just remove the cracks or, you know, seal the crack. It really won't take away the cracks, but look how much less noticeable that is, especially from, um, you know, when you're not like right up close in it. Um, it really, really did a good job moisturizing that and making it look less dried out and noticeable than it was before and the handles just came out looking great so again this is the overall result i still have to obviously clean my brass but i've taken a really dried out really sort of dated looking alma and at least brought back a little bit of sheen and life to it so it doesn't look as quite as tired as it did and again this was using the light brown urad had i used the neutral i think i probably would have ended up with a little bit of a lighter patina result the dark patina does not bother me i sort of like it because especially when it doesn't look um dark like dirty or blackened and as you can see let's see if i can get this in like better light the handles don't look dark or blackened at all they just look honey golden which is you know what you want um just what you want you want your handles to look like that so this this patina doesn't bother me at all in fact i think it's actually beautiful i think it looks better than it did before um not everybody would agree and that's fine but again, this is not a treatment for somebody who wants to lighten the look of their bag. This is for, you know, evening it out, bringing back some moisture and life to um, really dried out leather. So again, this was the how to apply your ad to your bag. Sorry, my husband's work stuff is everywhere. <laughs> he works from home some days, so he's got like a full setup there. But anyway, um, I would love to be able to show you more tips, tricks, and tutorials, so please make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss anything upcoming. I do have a couple of unboxings and reveals. I have literally had something sitting unopened in my closet for three months now, waiting to get a chance to film it for you. But I do have some unboxings and reveals coming so soon, hopefully, we'll see. But make sure that you subscribe so that when I do upload them, you don't miss them. And as always, thanks for watching. Bye.